Welcome to Lecture 7. We've now covered the internal and the external environment. Yeah, I know, sometimes teachers say there are more environments. Hang on, this is Egg Timer Business Study, so each lecture lasts approximately the same time as it takes to boil an egg. So, what, what was I saying? Oh yes, teachers say there are more environments. For example, the external environment, slept, social, legal, economic, political, technological, could also include the environment itself, thus making it sleeped, S-L-E-E-P-T. From industrial waste to acid rain. Stay tuned to number one to find out 10 of the most polluting industries in the world. Number 10, agriculture. There can be no denying that pesticides and other chemicals used by the agricultural industry pollute the environment. Studies continue to show the negative impact that these chemicals can have on local wildlife and water sources. There is no one single cause of agriculture pollution. Pesticides, fertilizers, contaminated water, soil erosion, sedimentation, livestock diet, and waste requirements can cause health-related issues and have an effect on aquatic animals. In 2016, The Guardian covered a report which stated that farming was the biggest cause of air pollution in Europe. The study at the heart of the 2016 Guardian article takes it up a step further by highlighting the industry's impact on air pollution. When the nitrogen compounds are mixed with the air already polluted from other industries, they combine to form solid particles that can stick in the fine lung tissue of children and adults, causing breathing difficulties and impaired lung and heart function, eventually leading to premature expiration. The internal environment, marketing, finance, human resource management and production could also include purchasing. But the message of these lectures is to keep it simple. We want you to pass this exam and pass it well and at a high grade by using what is all around you, business common sense, rather than wading through a textbook where a lot of it, but not all, is available if you simply made yourself aware. Think about what you've done today. Maybe you were taken to school by bus or by car. Let's take a journey by car. If petrol prices go up, then do most people still buy the petrol? The same amount? Yes. And therefore they're not very responsive to a change in price. In economic and business terms, this means that demand for petrol is inelastic, i.e. does not respond a great deal to a change in price. Why is this so? Answer, there are no close substitutes. Yes, there may be a substitute to going by bus or car. Perhaps you could walk and get the morning exercise, maybe. But that's not a substitute for petrol, but a substitute for that way of travel. At lunchtime, maybe you went out of school and bought food elsewhere. What were the prices like, low or high? Do you think prices may be higher at lunchtime? Why is this so? How do cafes 
and pubs, restaurant and other food eating places compete? Is it by price or advertising or branding or ambience or what? Why not this coming weekend wander around town keeping a notepad handy? Think about the elements of marketing that are available. These are real business examples. Let's take this a step further. If you have a part-time job or know someone who has, think about what motivates workers. How would this change if the government changed the tax rates or allowed you to earn more without paying tax? No, I'm not talking about the Panama Papers, but the tax threshold, i.e. how much you can earn without legally paying tax. In your class, you have a source of real business experience, your teacher. What motivates him or her? What sort of leadership style does your head teacher follow? One of the keys to Apple is Apple's an incredibly collaborative company. And so, you know how many committees we have at Apple? No. Zero. We have no committees. No committees. We are, a ver we are organized like a startup. One person's in charge of iPhone OS software. One person's in charge of Mac hardware. One person's in charge of iPhone hardware engineering. Another person's in charge of worldwide marketing. Another person's in charge of operations. It's, we're organized like a startup. We're the biggest startup on the planet. And we all meet for three hours once a week, and we talk about everything we're doing, the whole business. And there's tremendous teamwork at the top of the company which filters down to tremendous teamwork throughout the company. And teamwork is dependent on trusting the other folks to come through with their part without watching them all the time, but trusting that they're going to come through with their parts. And that's what we do really well. And we're great at figuring out how to divide things up into these great teams that we have and all work on the same thing, touch bases frequently, and bring it all together into a product. We do that really well. And so what I do all day is meet with teams of people and work on ideas and solve problems to make new products, to make new marketing programs, whatever it is. And are people willing to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, other than snarky journalists. I mean, people that oh, work Oh, yeah. For no, we have wonderful arguments. And do you win them all? Or? Oh, no, I wish I did. <laughs> oh, see, you can't. <laughs> if you want to hire great people and have them stay working for you, you have to let them make a lot of decisions, and you have to, you have to be run by ideas, not hierarchy. The best ideas have to win. So, Otherwise, good people don't stay. But you must be more than a facilitator who runs meetings. You obviously contribute your own ideas. I contribute ideas, sure. Well, I, why would I be there if I didn't? <laughs> what is the staff turnover like at your school? What factors affect staff turnover or the job satisfaction of teachers? The resource is there. Ask questions. Let's move on to lecture eight. <laughs>